I welcome members to the third meeting in 2016 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and ask members to switch off mobile phones, please. Um, I welcome James Kelly as a substitute member for this morning's meeting. Good morning, James. Uh, agenda item one is instruments subject to negative procedure, the Public Contract Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-446. The purpose of this instrument is to revoke and replace the Public Contract Scotland Regulations 2012 and to transpose into Domestic Law Directive 2014-24 EU on public procurement. The instrument could be clearer in the following respect. Regulation 2 defines the term central government authority as the authorities listed in Schedule 1 and where any such authority is succeeded by another authority which is itself a contracting authority, their successors. Regulation 2 also defines the term contracting authority as the state, a region or local authority body governed by public law or association formed by one or more such authorities or bodies. Directive 2014-24 EU defines central government authorities as the contracting authorities listed in Annex 1. However, the definition of central government authority in Regulation 2 does not refer to contracting authorities, but only to authorities. The central government authorities listed in Schedule 1 of the instrument are intended to be the contracting authorities for the purpose of the regulations. However, the definition of central government authority, as out of Regulation 2.1, does not make this policy intention clear. The instrument also contains the following cross-referencing errors. A, paragraph five, paragraphs 5, 6 and 7 of Regulation refer, refer to, respectively, paragraphs 5A, 5B and 5C. The references should instead be to paragraphs 4A, 4B and 4C. Regulation 38.1 refers to paragraph 9A. However, there is no paragraph 9 in Regulation 38. Regulation 85.3a and b refer to respectively Regulation 43.11 and 43.10. The references should instead be to Regulation 43.14 and 43.13. Regulation 91.2 refers to paragraph 10b. The reference should instead be to Regulation 92.1b. Regulation 99.5 defines the term the utilities amendments as the amendments made to the utility contract Scotland Regulations 2012 defined as the UCR by paragraph 9 of Schedule 6. The reference to paragraph 9 should instead be to paragraph 8. And the new paragraphs 10.1b and 10.2 of Schedule 3 to the Rehabilitation of Offenders Exclusions and Exceptions Scotland Order 2013 as substituted by paragraph 10 of Schedule 6 to the regulations refer to Regulation 80. These references should be to Regulation 79. Members have any comments on any of that, please? Um, I would just say that um, given the apparent willingness of the, the government, uh, which I welcome, of course, to correct the cross-referencing errors, I think when they're, um, as it were, reopening and relaying uh, this instrument, they ought to take the opportunity to uh, take the ambiguity out of uh, the section um, Regulation 2, um, as already um, read into the official report by yourself, convener. Um, it, it seems reasonable that that, that should be done, uh, and the difference between authority uh, and contracting authorities um, should be made clear. Um, I cannot see for the life of me why the government wouldn't want to take that opportunity to remove that ambiguity which uh, certainly our legal advisers tell us exists and um, if they uh, perceive it then I am certain other uh, legal advisers in, in future and, and solicitors and lawyers will, will also find that ambiguity and why would we not take this opportunity to make clear uh, legislation when we have it. Indeed. Still. Um, where there is potential doubt about what's before us and there is an amending order coming, there appears to be no downside in making this clearer and I think we should uh, seek to have the government change it. Yes, pretty, pretty clearly the, the, the view of the committee. Thank you. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under the following reporting grounds? Reporting ground H as the meaning of Regulation 2.1 could be clearer and the general reporting ground given the cross-referencing errors. Yes. Yes. Indeed. And we would like the government to deal with both. 
The Local Government Pension Scheme Scotland Amendment Number 2 Regulations 2015 SSI 2015 448 Regulation 29E of this instrument asserts a de inserts a definition of the Transitional Savings Regulations 2014 in Schedule 1 to the Local Government Pension Scheme Scotland Regulations 2014. However, the Scottish Government has confirmed that the policy intention was to insert a definition of the Transitional Provisions and Saving Regulations 2014 in that schedule. The Committee may wish to note that the Scottish Government has undertaken to correct the error by a further amending instrument to come into force on the 2nd of February 2016. Does the Committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the Parliament's attention under the general reporting ground? Yes, yes. Thank you. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Public Bodies Joint Working Integration Joint Board Establishment Scotland Amendment Order 2016 SSI 2016 2, nor on the Health Board's Membership and Procedure Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016 SSI 2016 3, the Community Right to Buy Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016 SSI 2016 4, the Local Governance Scotland Act 2004, Remuneration Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016 6, the Scottish Local Government Elections Amendment Order 2016, SSI 2016 7, and the Representation of the People Absent Voting at Local Government Elections Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016 8. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item two, instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. No points have been raised by legal advisers on the Scottish Parliament Elections Returning Officer Fees and Charges Regulations 2016, SSI 2016 10. Is the committee content with that instrument, please? Yes. Agenda item three, the Transplantation Authorisation of Removal of Organs, etc. Scotland Bill. This item of business of the committee to consider the member in charge's response to its stage one report. Do members have any comments on that, please? For as much as we have no comments, is the committee content to note the response? Yes. Thank you. Gender item five, report on instruments considered by the committee during 2014-15. This is for the committee to consider the Scottish Government's response to its report on instruments considered by the committee during 2014-15. This correspondence also supplements the committee's oral evidence session held with the Minister for Parliamentary Business on the 15th of December last year. Do members have any comments, please? John. Um, yeah, on page four uh, of our papers, um, there's a paragraph, the final paragraph is headed, uh, Bills Containing Framework uh, Provisions. And uh, the Minister says in the second sentence, uh, there is, however, a place for bills that provide an outline within which policy can be fully developed with stakeholders, then implemented by subordinate legislation. And I, I would have to say, I think I have some reservations about that sentence. Uh, I mean, it could be taken to mean a few things. Um, I, I'm more happy if it just means that the vast bulk of the legislation is on the face of the bill and uh, there's a little bit of movement in subordinate legislation, which I think is what we're aiming at. Um, however, I think we have seen examples, and the way the sentence is written, um, it seems to me that it could be much, much wider than that, and even to the extent there's very little policy in some areas in, on the face of the bill, and far too much left to subordinate legislation. So I have to say I don't fully agree with the Minister on that point, um, and uh, I don't know whether we should say that to him or just leave it till later. John, please. Um, thank you, uh, Convener. I, I would back up um, exactly what my colleague John Mason has said. Um, I too am very concerned about this apparent trend of um, leaving policy development to subordinate legislation um, and to an engagement with stakeholders. Parliament exists. Uh, to create legislation. That's why we are the elected representatives of the people of Scotland. And I don't uh, think that this is a, a trend which has now emerged of, of being uh, for, the, for the benefit of, of creating good legislation. I say it's a trend because we've had uh, the Community Empowerment Bill last year, we've had the, the Land Reform Bill, and I believe uh, the burials and cremation bill, um, all to be short of, of policy on the face of the bill, and all, all three of those bills um, are now to be uh, developed in, in, in subordinate legislation. Uh, I do not think that is what Parliament um, should be happy about. 
and I would once again um, draw this to the government's uh, attention uh, for in as much as we've already raised this with the Minister and I welcome of course his response in other respects in, in this letter to this committee but nonetheless I think we should write to him again and say that we this uh, element um, uh, we're, we're not content with and ask him uh, to consider and if, and if this is to be uh, the way legislation is developed in future now that we've spotted this trend as it were then uh, he should come out and, and say so loudly and clearly and publicly because this is certainly a departure from what has um, been uh, the lawmaking process hitherto. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Steve? Um, I, th I think there are a couple of points we should, we should put on the record. First of all that if this approach is being taken uh, to remind uh, all who might be watching our proceedings that we'd expect these changes in law uh, to be uh, affirmative instruments. Mm -hmm. And that's a point we've made quite quite regularly, and it's as well to remake it. Uh, but, but equally, there are affirmative instruments uh, that bring forward new policy. And that's an important point for committees who are responsible for the policies concerned. And I think it may well be in writing to the minister that we seek an assurance that where secondary instruments are the means by which new policy is brought forward, that timetables will be arranged such that subject committees have adequate time to consider the policy issues. Because other subordinate legislation, the policy committees are in essence looking to see whether the second instrument properly implements policy that Parliament has already dis uh, discussed and agreed. And I think there is a, a difference of approach that, that it would be helpful to get the government recognising that uh, difference exists and making appropriate commitments to Parliament that it will ensure there is sufficient time. Mm -hmm. uh, for these policy changes that are being brought forward by secondary legislation to be adequately and properly considered. Okay. So maybe the issue is not the traditional conception of a, of a super affirmative process whereby there is more consultation, but actually maybe a process whereby there is more time deliberately, specifically beforehand, given to ensure that policy is properly considered? I think it would be not unreasonable for us as a committee to write to the Minister and, and really ask him to explain how he sees this uh, new process um, evolving, essentially, um, whereby we, we are developing uh, policy uh, through subordinate legislation. Uh, uh, because there are nuances such as uh, Stuart Stevenson has accurately uh, described, uh, and therefore the, this should really be a matter for, for Parliament's um, wider consideration. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, I can just add, I mean, I, I think this is a product of the fact that we're getting towards the end of the session, and I think whatever government of whatever colour was in place, we might uh, be seeing this kind of thing happening, because we have also seen throughout this session uh, many bills which have been very, very thoroughly examined uh, before they uh, were even drafted and uh, consulted on and all the rest of it, and uh, all of that has been laid out in the face of the bill. So I do think there's a timing thing, and I think... There's a particular. I mean, I think we all accept that we need to speed things up towards the end. But when it's a major piece of legislation, I think the land reform was one, which is really very wide-reaching. Eh, that's where there has to be adequate time for it, in my opinion. Right. Well, on the basis of that discussion, which of course is on the record, and the government will be listening, I shall see if I can draft a letter that we might consider uh, and send to the government as a response to Jeff Fitzpatrick's response to us. If members are content with that. Thank you. Um, I think that finishes agenda item four, at which point I can move us into private.